Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, November 9th of 2017. I just, well, let me say first, uh, when I got out of high school, when I, right after I graduated from high school, I took a flying lesson, $5 for one hour flying lesson. And I never pursued it really beyond that, but you know, I was interested in flying. I subscribed to a couple aviation magazines. I even went out and bought a pilot's log, so I'd have my, so I would have the book, the log book or whatever, where you put in the number of hours. I had that. Uh, I think I bought some other, you know, bought some other stuff. I didn't buy an airplane, but I never really pursued it. But I've always been interested in, you know, aviation and and uh, everything uh, like that astronomy, you know, radio communications. Uh, I used to monitor uh, the uh, first satellites that were put up into space. Uh, used to monitor Capcom when they were doing Mercury uh, launches and things like that, actually listening to their communications channels, all types of stuff. So, uh, a big enthusiast of flying and everything like that. Uh, I received this email today from Product Hunt Digest, Daily Digest or whatever, and uh, it's showing here we wanted flying cars, uh, all we got was a Chrome extension, blah blah blah. Uber is launching flying cars in 2020, the headline says. And I thought, uh, is this the Onion publication, or is this, uh, is this a joke? Is this really going to, ha- you know, whatever? So I clicked on some links. Here it is, uh, over here. Let me bring back my picture wherever I am. Where am I? There I am. So I clicked on and ended up here at uh, Uber Elevate, and uh, it's a hundred. There's a video here that is a hundred and or uh, one minute and forty seconds. I hate to. I'll put the link to this site and to a uh, YouTube video that they have. This is it. It's uh, four minutes long. Okay, this is a different site. This is not the okay. So this is it. Not that is not it. They said, where in the heck is it? Anyway, uh, I guess I deleted it. I'll put it, I'll put it in the link below. It's very, very short, shorter than this, I believe. They turned off uh, commenting for some reason, YouTube, or well, YouTube didn't, but the people that, uh, Uber, I guess, that uploaded this. I wonder why they would turn off commenting. Anyway, it looks interesting. Uh, oh gosh, I wish, you know, it's a, a minute and 40 seconds. If I click it, they're probably, somebody's going to claim it. And, well, I won't try to make money off, so I'll turn off the, uh, let me just go ahead and run. I'll just turn off the thing, so that way, if they uh, demonetize me for, copyright in friend well they put it on YouTube
I'll go ahead and stop it. Anyway, she, they land, and she goes home to her loving family who are waiting for her, and her husband gives her a kiss, and she picks up her little daughter or whatever in her arms. Uh... Uber. Uh, I use Uber uh, all the time. I don't own a car. I, I use Uber. I'm very happy with their service. I occasionally use Lyft. Happy with their service. And of course, you know, this vertical, electric vertical aircraft, uh, you know, take, it'll take off vertically and land, you know, vertically. That seems like a really good idea. Um, my problem with the current, in the United States, this might work fine in uh, EU. I'm not sure how well under with our current political environment here in the United States that something like this would work, because uh, the Republicans and the right wing are totally opposed to regulation of any kind. Uh, I bank, I won't mention who I bank with. Right down the uh, half a block from here, there's a bank, and I use that bank. If you live in the United States, uh, if you live in the United States, uh, you'll know who I'm talking about, the bank that I'm talking about. I think that bank should be considered a criminal enterprise. There are uh, RICA laws that they can use against uh, criminal organizations that conspire or whatever. Uh, the, the bank has uh, committed offenses, in my opinion, and other people's opinion, that are criminal acts. Criminal acts. They're still in business and uh, I can't remember ever hearing of a banker going to, to jail. Uh, I'm sure there have somebody can pop up and say, "Oh yeah, you know," but I don't hear I don't hear about uh, bankers going to jail for criminal acts uh, or Wall Street corporations, stock companies, uh, investment companies. They don't those people don't go to they commit all types of of crimes and. Uh, they don't. Uh, they don't suffer any consequences, and the Republicans in the right wing want less and less regulation of uh, corporations and uh, large money organizations. Something like this, you're gonna you you're gonna want, but two. Even the you know the Republicans and uh, President Trump, they want to do away with the federal, with the FAA, uh, and they want it to be privatized. You know they they're in favor of Republicans and right wing and Trump are in favor of privatizing. They already have you know a lot privatizing prison. So somebody is found arrested, somebody goes to the court, a uh, person is found guilty and they're sentenced and they end up in a private prison. The incentive for the, for the private corporation that runs the prison is to keep people in prison and to fill the prisons. There's no incentive for them to want to do things to decrease the recidivism rate. They want their you know, that's how they make their money. Uh, I think that we need strong regulations for an awful lot. I, I want to see, you know, I don't want the Republicans want to regulate your bedroom. They want to say what type of sex you can have. They want to say whether you can use condoms or not, or whether you can use birth control or not. Uh, that type of thing, but they don't want regulations on the uh, corporations or the uh, companies that are on the New York Stock Exchange. They don't want 
supposedly Republicans want, you know, business to in more business, you know, more and more business, but they don't want to regulate it. Uh, they also don't do not want to. They want to give money. They want to give trillions of dollars in tax cuts to rich people and to corporations, but they don't want to build any infrastructure. You know, they don't want to improve the highways. They don't want to improve the fix the bridges. Uh, they don't want to fix the water pipes that have been down underground for forever. They don't want to do any of those things. They just want to give trillions and trillions of dollars to the corporations and to the rich people. Now, something like this, uh, well, you know, I want to see the pharmaceutical companies regulated. I want to see the corporations regulated. Uh, something like this, uh, I would have no objection to if they have a substructure of, you know, they have their own flight control or something or other for controlling these aircraft, which I assume, you know, I think what, drones have to stay below 500 feet and of course you can't be within a certain distance, fly one within a certain distance of a airport or whatever. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, these are going to fly 500 feet up to a certain, not very high, they don't need to go very high, but up to a certain height and that aircraft will stay above that uh, height. And then of course these will not fly in a flight plan of, you know, if it's a helicopter, if it's an airport in a certain area, then the aircraft will have to come down from their altitude of 10,000 or 20,000, I don't know, you know, I don't know that. They'll have to come down, so they can't be coming down through this. So there's going to be, and I have no trouble with this being a private corporation, Uber or whoever, is doing this. But I do want regulation, uh, strong regulation. And I want, you know, penalties if violations are, you know, if violations are made. I'm just very much concerned that, too, there's something, and I just noticed that in a, uh, I think a CNN headline today, oh, it was about uh, Kevin Spacek, and I never watched that show, what is it, that on Netflix, well, uh, and it, in the little article that I read, I forget how many millions and millions and millions of dollars. Well, first it starts out saying that the city of Baltimore, that the, uh, because Kevin Spacek is over so far as that TV show is concerned and that Netflix will have nothing, they show that on Netflix, the, the show, but they're not going to show any episodes or any, anything that if he, he has to be out of it, he's, and he is out of it. And so then, but then they, so they talked about that this, the program is been for the last five or six seasons, whatever it is, it's been in the city of Baltimore. I didn't know that. I figured Hollywood, you know. Uh, and then they talked about how many millions and millions and millions of dollars that the city of Baltimore had given to as grants and every, you know, I think it was like 50 million or 60 million and then plus other amounts and then grant, they, a, a recent grant of, I don't know, one and a half million that they gave to. What in the hell is going on? I can understand that some, at some point, sometimes, now I'm not a sports fan, never have been. I know I'm a man. I'm supposed to be watching football or boxing or or something, but I, uh, I'm not really a sports fan. But I don't think that cities should be buying, uh, paying a, a penny for a sports stadium. 
uh, for these professional teams, but the professional teams pay for it. If they can't pay for their stadium, then let them play in a little league, you know. If they can't pay for it, then uh, let them pay less to the, uh, the players. If the players don't want to play for less money, then uh, use minor league, you know, amateur, somebody who wants to play, you know. I just, so that's, and now with something like this, I can see for a movie, maybe Texas, there's a, a few movies that have, I'm in Texas, Fort Worth, Texas. There's a few movies that have been made in Texas and I don't know how much the state of Texas or the, you know, but I don't think it's very much where, you know, was, you know, but in this take, case of Baltimore, I couldn't believe the amount of money that they, for, okay, and it, they talked about uh, that if this, you know, I gotta find out the name of it, I, talking to you not knowing the name is CNN. Okay, here it is. The show is okay. Kevin Spacek's out of okay. This is a movie. Okay, we want to know about the show. Okay, what's the name of the Netflix TV special? Okay, House of Cards. Okay, it is House of Cards. So, that show's made in Baltimore, and they've given tons and tons of money. What, what in the hell is going on? Okay, they said 2,000, oh, you know, this, there's 2,000 people here if the Game of, no, not the Game of Thrones, the House of Cards, if the House of Cards doesn't go on, 2,000 people, that's a lot of people, are, and I'm sorry about that, you know, will lose their job. Well, the city gave millions and millions and millions. I mean, how, 2,000 people, if you, I'm not suggesting that it be, you know, you do it, but if you just uh, paid them a salary for a while out of, you know, instead of giving the money to House of Cards, you got 2,000 uh, people there, you want you're worried about them, pay them some, you know, pay them some money. I'm not actually suggesting suggesting that, but uh, they talk about all the money that Baltimore has given to make the House of Cards in Baltimore, and and for those two thousand people, if you divided the money that was given for this. Now, of course, I understand there's, it's not just 2,000 people's salary. When that show is there, they use, they order food, they order, they use transportation, they uh, have all types, there's all types of services around them that do things for them. I understand that there's more than just 2,000. But all that money, if you just divided that up and gave it to the 2,000 employees, they would all be, I would think, or to the 2,000 people that worked on the thing, they would all be multi-millionaires. They would be opening up places, businesses. They would be buying things. That would help the economy. I'm, of course, just not suggesting that. I'm just saying that that's a... Two, I don't know that, you know, it's not, you know, it's cities, it's counties, and it's states that are looking for these businesses, you know, like the southern states uh, will change their law. Well, they don't have to change it much. They were to change it, you know. They'll change it to uh, right to work states, which <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? The right to work state, it's actually the opposite. It just means fuck the unions, uh, fuck the working man. You'll work for what we say. If you don't like it, you can get your ass out the door. Uh, but the states will change it to, you know, hey, this is a right to work state. And then businesses will go down there because they can screw labor, you know, better. Uh, 
But take Baltimore. They gave all this money. If I were in a position of making these deals or whatever, I would say, of course, uh, the TV people or the movie people wouldn't, you know, they would go someplace else. Well, fuck it, you know, let them go. If I were uh, Baltimore, I would say, in the very beginning, I would just say, okay, great. You know, we'll, we welcome you here. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be nice to you. But, and I don't know the exact percentage that you should, you know, you should say or whatever, but it seemed like it should say, you know, uh, a production company for whatever the fucking TV show is called, you know, is getting X amount of money. Netflix shows that they're getting X amount of money. Seemed to me like, a, and Baltimore should say, okay, well, we want, and I'm not sure this would be the correct percentage, you know. Okay, well, we want 1% of the profits. Uh, and then when this uh, house of cards, when it's, you know, re residuals come in, uh, we want a percentage of that as long as it's being shown. You know, if it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now or whatever, we want a very small effort going into the city, you know, going into the city budget. I don't think those kind of things happen. But anyway, back to the with the privatizing of everything and with the I'll put the links to these underneath with uh, the infrastructure not being, you know, and with cutting corners I was not for, I was for uh, doing away or dividing up the phone companies because back in the beginning the telephone AT&T or Southwestern Bell, AT&T or Southwestern Bell or whatever, they were, because I had a computer that's before the World Wide Web, I had a computer bulletin board system and it used the phone you know, people called in by the phone, people called, you know, the, my bulletin board system called out to get packets of mail and news groups and that type of stuff in. And the phone rates were outrageous and it, they cost you more to call inside the state than it did to call a long distance. And so breaking that up. But then when it came to uh, breaking up the airlines, I, th I thought that and the other things that they have uh, broken up, uh, deregulated, uh, it's not the word, what is it? You know, airline pilots used to make, I'm thinking, you know, 140000 a year or, or, you know, more. Now, pilots, we've seen cases where, you know, these, where the pilots are making 40000 40, a year and they're happy to have. 40,000 a year and and there have been some accidents apparently that you know where uh, I remember one it happened to be a female pilot and she wasn't working for one of the major because the major airlines also when you get on an aircraft if you think I'm not sure if a TWA or United I'm not sure which ones are you know around anymore but Used to be when you got on up, let's say TWA, Trans World Airlines. I don't, they don't exist anymore, I don't think. But when you got on a plane, you were flying on with that airline. The pilot, you know, they were uh, well paid. The in fact, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I don't know where they had them elsewhere, but their repair center, you know, was there for the the aircraft that needed to be repaired or whatever were flown there. And those were union employees that had benefits and whatever. When the airlines were uh, broken up and whatever, the, no more unions. And uh, when a repair was is needed or something for one of these. Well, oh, the one thing is too, you know, you sign up for 
Southwest Airlines. You, you're signed up for Southwest Airlines. You go to some city, and then you think you're flying by Southwest Airlines, landing there, and then you're going to another another city. And those are low bid. Those are companies that have airplanes, and uh, they bid. You know, Southwest Airlines takes the lowest bidder or whatever, and that's what you're flying on. You think, oh, I like it, you know, Southwest Airlines, and this is really, and then you get on, you don't know who who that, you know, who actually you're flying on. Uh, I just think that with the atmosphere and the politics that we have, that uh, this Uber Elevate will not work here because people don't want to, they don't want to hold companies responsible and everything is the lowest, you know, the lowest bidder. Uh, so now, I mean, I hope this, I hope it works. Uh, I would love to, I like to gamble. I haven't, I haven't been gambling in five years, six years, seven years or whatever. I would love to, uh, well, I can't afford to take, an, well, I probably couldn't afford to fly that either. If I couldn't afford an Uber to take me uh, an hour and a half or two hours to a casino in Oklahoma, I doubt that I could afford to fly. I could get there faster, you know, probably. And, uh, but I don't think it's gonna be cheaper than taking the, taking the Uber car, so. But I mean, I would love to be able to uh, get on one of these flights and have it land in the parking lot of a casino and I could uh, gamble some occasionally and then step out, you know, and, and fly back. And uh, But I just think with the atmosphere that we have and the pol political situation that it is with uh, the Republicans and President Trump wanting to take trillions of dollars that's being paid in now in taxes and to take that and just remove it from the budget and give it to corporations and really, really rich people. And then of course that money has to be, the money has to go fill that hole. The trillions that they take out, money has to go in there. And so where's the money gonna come from? I'm on, I'm on social security. Uh, and they're gonna they're gonna come and I have uh, Medicare. You know, I paid into Social Security my entire life. I worked two jobs many many years. Money also went, uh, and even and of course money went in for uh, Medicare. Then every hour that I worked and every hour that I was paid, money came out and went into those went into those funds. Even now, when I am retired uh, and I have Medicare, I still have to pay a little bit over $100 every month. Even though I paid in it my entire life, I still pay a hundred and a little bit over $100 goes into uh, Medicare. Uh, so it's not free, but it wasn't free. It wouldn't be free. You know, I paid, I paid and the rest of us all paid into it like an insurance plan. Republicans are supposed to like insurance plans and uh, things like that, but apparently they don't. So I don't know. This is interesting. I'll put the links below to these, these sites. They're talking about 2020 and in a little clip there's uh, where they talk about it or whatever, apparently they're, they mentioned Dallas, Dallas gets kind of mentioned, so I'm in Fort, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, so maybe in 2020, I'll be making uh, YouTube videos of uh, me flying on one of these things. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's not it. That's it.